Oh, don't worry about it. There oh, we go. I Apart from a couple of technical difficulties, uh, we finally made it. We're, we're finally trapped in. Uh, firstly, how are you? I'm great. I mean, it's been super busy, but busy is good. And I feel like, oh my gosh, really, since the since the drumathon, like my my life has changed. It's amazing how one little video. You know, before the drumathon, when I did that drumming to the BBC News music video, literally in my garden in Leeds, something I did during my work day just changed everything. It's been it's been amazing, and I'm just trying to enjoy it as much as I can. It, it became somewhat of a cult phenomenon, didn't it? Um, that that BBC News theme, and and the uh, everyone was chatting about it at the time thinking it was such a banger and you know there was this new appreciation for it why did why did you kind of um almost want to get on board with that and start you know drumming away to that particular theme song I think that piece of music is something that has been there throughout my life really especially you know my my professional life, you know, I've worked for the BBC for like 20 years now. So that music has always been there rumbling away in the background. As far as what made me decide to make that video, at the time when it was the first lockdown, it was April 21, I think a lot of people were feeling terrified and very uncertain about what the future was going to look like and even whether or not they might see some family members again. And we were almost obsessed with, with the latest news because that's where, of course, that's the very nature of, me, of news. And I, you know, I know how important news is. But I think the way that people were just watching news bulletins and watching the BBC News channel, for example, on heavy rotation, the BBC News music almost became like a soundtrack to their day. Mm. And people were hearing it on the hour every hour. So I think that's the reason why I thought this would be a good thing to drum along to. That video, though, Sam, it was something that I did in one take in the middle of doing actual weather forecasts, like doing my job when I was working from home. I was one of the first weather presenters to do the weather from home. And I was using an iPhone and, you know, going to stand in the garden with my cat to do the weather forecast and thought, let's just let's just do something fun with this. However, what I was not expecting and could never have expected really was the outcome and how how it just went global and how people just for some reason loved the the thing of me doing where the forecast and mincing over to my drums and then massively like overplaying it and smashing everything twice as hard as I needed to. And I suppose for you, it must have been quite nice to almost transition from being that uh, weather presenter that sort of the the, the very smart well-dressed weather presenter to almost a bit of an entertainment presenter now as well and, and sort of dipping your toe in that world as well yeah totally and it's been weird how that has happened it's gone from I've invested a lot of time and money really into the weather you know over the years and and it's something that is very close to me but I think that as time has gone on I've come to realize how much I just love the more general presenting and telling a story and music obviously I do a lot of work with Radio 2 now at the moment and that's just been lovely to be able to talk about music and in a completely unscripted fashion as well so I've really loved that transition from weather into more of the stuff that I'm doing now and to be able to bring the drums along with me fab and what I've really noticed uh, as well, you know, you're seeing you appear on programmes such as Freeze the Fear, this new BBC Wales series, which we're going to chat about in a minute, um, is it really does put Wales on the map uh, and, and people start to realise sort of the, the talent we have here in Wales. So for you, how did it feel to actually do that, being a Welshman yourself? Oh, it's just been brilliant. And I think that we Wales is such a, an important thing. Uh, my Welsh identity is so important to me and the country is super important to me as well. And I always get real pangs of hair rights. You know, I, I love Wales and I love the people of Wales. And whenever I get to work in Wales, be it for like a one show film or doing something for SVOC or Wales Home of the Year that you just mentioned, it's always a real treat to go back to Wales because I'm based up in Manchester at the moment. And I think that being able to talk about things like your identity and what that means to you is important. And when I was in Wales, 
I, you know, it was understood. Yeah, I'm Welsh. I live here. This is where I've always lived. But then when you leave it, I think I understood how important Wales is to me. And it was at that point when I started working in London that I realised, oh, my gosh. Yeah, Welsh is, is, is super important to me. Being Welsh and the Welsh language, they're all things that make up me. So I absolutely love flying that flag, that fabulous flag with a dragon on it. I'll fly it everywhere. There's no better flag, is there, really? I mean, to be honest, we've definitely got the best flag. Um, and, oh, I, of course, you know, the, the one thing I did want to chat about to you, it sort of it hadn't really got to do with anything, really, but the weather. How have you been finding the weather right now? God. Oh, my God. It's hot, it's hot isn't it? It's so hot. I, as someone with ginger hair and fair skin, you know, this isn't weather for me. And of course, working in weather forecasting, you've always got to be across it. I've actually gone part time on the weather now. So even on my days off, I feel like I've got to know what the weather's doing because people will want to come and talk to you about it. So I've not been coping with the hot weather very well, but there's a change on the horizon. Also, I'm reliably informed. So the the thing that strikes me is how do you adapt your style to the weather you're obviously well known for your unique style and uh, you know your your amazing dress sense but how, how do you adapt wearing these suits out when it's really really hot I think that it's it's something that I decided to do when I first started doing the weather is that I was going to start wearing three-piece suits I love brooches you know a lot of men don't wear brooches and and I think they're great it's a great way of accessorizing something and, and adding a little bit of flamboyance to whatever you're wearing, if you want to do that, that is. But yeah, three-piece suits in the hot weather. Anyone who's been to a wedding in the summer who's had to wear a three-piece suit will know these are things that aren't designed for the heat. However, when I first started doing a lot of the drumming after that video that we spoke about, I was always wearing three-piece suits because people expected me to be drumming in a suit. So I've drummed in TV studios uh, in three-piece suits under the heat of the lights outside in the sun behind a drum kit I think I've just got used to wearing three-piece suits now Mm -hmm. and it is what it is and and I'm sure many people have taken style inspiration from you for for various uh, events that they're going to Um, and uh, of course Owen uh, we're talking today about your new BBC Wales series Um, so to somebody who hasn't seen it because one episode has already come out uh, tell us a little bit more about the series as a whole oh my gosh it's gorgeous honestly I when I was asked to present this show I immediately fell in love with the idea so Wales Home of the Year is essentially an opportunity to not only look at some of the most incredible homes that are in Wales but it's the unexpected that I love about this show because I think a lot of the time over the years you think of a property program and you you always expect it to contain these huge you know million pound houses that are going to be out of your reach financially or they're like the dream lottery winning home but what I love about Wales Home of the Year is is that yeah of course we include homes that are gorgeous stunning grand and opulent but also we have all sorts of homes in there things like terraced houses small two-bedroom terraced houses bungalows you know these these things that don't often appear in programs that are about sensational homes Mm. and for me that was really important because I grew up in Ammonford in southwest Wales in an end of terrace house in a working class family and I love homes of all shapes and sizes you know you look at somewhere like Ammonford you've got the terraced houses that would have been there for years because of the coal mining industry you've also got big detached houses you've got new builds popping up and you've got lovely new apartments and that's just one town in Wales And I think that we're very lucky in Wales to have such a kind of diverse kind of portfolio, if you like, of buildings. And a lot of that is down to the industries and the kind of materials that were made. So it is a home programme. I wouldn't call it a property programme because we always refer to them as homes, not houses. Because as somebody who's renovated uh, several houses over the years, and I've had to learn how to do a lot of that stuff myself, mainly for budget reasons I love that kind of transition between making a house a home and you know making it your own thing and one of the things I loved about home of the year is every place you walk into you get a sense of the owner and I think the viewer gets that too 
Well, actually, I was going to ask you about that, because in the first episode, you actually walked away from the uh, Victorian uh, mid-terraced house, uh, which was lovely, can I add, uh, and you actually said you felt quite emotional by that experience. Now, I, 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 just, I just couldn't imagine doing that, but, but sort of why, why did you feel like that after, after seeing that particular house? When I walked into the Victorian terrace, I it reminded me of a, a home that I once had in Cardiff to start off with. It was um, again a mid that was a mid terrace house, it's like the Victorian terrace, and you could just tell Sam that the owners had put loads of work into it and had put their heart and soul into this. They had immaculate taste. It was the walls, but it was unusual as well. And they weren't afraid to take risks. And a lot of the time with homes like that, you know, this is a Victorian property. So there were things within it that would have been original features. There was some lovely carpentry on the stairs and the kind of banisters. And then you had things like the architraves around the doors, which were original and the coving. All of these things I look at and I'm like, wow, they've kept all this stuff. But they'd, I think they'd successfully managed to inject their personality into the place by also respecting the kind of heritage of the building, you know? Mm, yeah. And they'd, you could almost sense that this was their home, but they hadn't completely just stripped it and, you know, taken everything out of it to make it what they wanted to be. They'd also been respectful to what this building was. And I got a real, yeah, I got a really emotional feeling in there. And I just loved that place so much. And I I'd imagine there are going to be moments uh, throughout the series, um, because if I was in your position, going into all these different houses, then I'd sort of almost be inspired by, by I, I do would just be a constant flood of inspiration. Like me and my girlfriend are currently trying to get a house our, ourselves. And, and it's just like seeing, even watching that programme the other day, I was like, oh my God, I want to decorate my house like that. Did, did you feel like that? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's what makes this programme slightly different to a lot of the other ones as well, because we are talking about all sorts of different homes here, all sorts of different budgets. You know, we're not talking about, as I said, the kind of million pound homes necessarily every single time. Although we have had some absolutely spectacular big homes, which you'll see in the upcoming episodes. Mm -hmm. I think there's something for for everyone no matter what your kind of taste and style is and that's what's great about the the judges as well so i come from it from a, the perspective of a person who's renovated some houses it's not my job it's just something i love i love style i love object to the story and i love houses essentially whereas you've got mandy watkins who is an interior designer that's mandy's job so mandy's looking at one thing then glenn thomas who's a, like an award-winning architect Glenn will have a certain view on things. So the three of us together don't always agree on which home should be the home to get X amount of points or whatever. And you'll see that. And I think that makes it an interesting watch as well, because we're not all really coming at this from the same perspective. Mm. And I think that makes it interesting. And I think it makes people realize that every home is special to the owner and the the owner of that home has made it this way for a reason and it's hard as a judge to go in there then and start you know applying this critique to a place because it's someone's home mm. and that's something that the three of us were really respectful throughout the whole thing but that said every place we visited was in it had in in a different capacity or in some capacity a wow factor and I think that was just a lovely thing to experience. When you got the phone call asking you to, to actually do the series and, and uh, you know, take part, uh, what, what did you hope that people were going to get from this, this particular series? Was it, was, it some, was it catered for people like myself who were going to look at it and go, oh, hang on, I'm inspired by that, I'd like to do that? Or, or what, why did you want to take part? I wanted to take part because... Um, Interior design and home and the structure of buildings are things that I find really interesting. I love, like, I spent a lot of time talking to Glenn about architecture and it, what he does when he's designing or working on a new home. And I, I, I'm just all ears when it comes to stuff like this, you know, and in equal measure. We loved working with Mandy and between takes, we'd be talking about, you know, the style of a room and how we would have done it or what we loved about this place. So, as far as that is concerned, it is exactly what I had wished and hoped for. And I think when I first got the call, 
I just knew that I would love looking around other people's homes because I can waste hours and hours on right move looking at houses that I'm not going to buy that I'm just nosing at or if we're going for a walk you know I love looking at different buildings from different eras for whatever reason be it the architecture the style or just the way the homeowner has sort of presented the place so those are the things that I wanted to get from this on a selfish front and I absolutely got that and in the process we made a great tv show and I can't let you go, Owen, without discussing Freeze the Fear. Um, what, what, a, what a fantastic series. Uh, we actually tried cold water swimming. I tried cold water swimming with my girlfriend the other day. And Amazing. I understand it. I get it. I understand why it is good. Um, whereas yeah. watching the programme, I'm like, I was like, oh, I just can't imagine that this is actually therapeutic. But since the series ended, um, since you all went off to that fantastic location to go and film it, uh, have yeah. you incorporated any of those techniques into your life? Do you still take cold showers? Yeah, I do. Absolutely. I still do the cold showers. I'm thrilled by the way that you tried a bit oh, of well, cold I was inspired. Cold I, well, the fact that you could literally jump off the top of a bridge, I was like, well, i got to do my bit. i got, I got to give oh. it a you go. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, every day on that show, right, I woke up and I thought, is today the day I die? I was thinking, is is this, am I going to perish? Because the stunts were scary. I'm terrified of, I was terrified of cold water. Not a massive fan of heights either, to be honest. And we were either being thrown into ice or thrown off tall things. So in being there with Wim and getting to know him, and we spent a lot of time with Wim. And of course, you know, you, you can't get all of that included in a, a TV show. There was a lot of stuff that we were doing that were off camera or weren't included for whatever reason and I learned that the cold is something that can be used to help manage my anxiety because my anxiety has come in peaks and troughs over the years and it's always there and I've always spoken about it more so recently I would say and the kind of coping mechanisms that I've had over the years have been drumming mainly the drums have been my safety blanket since I've been a child you know to be able to go there and sit behind this thing and get completely involved in it and feel like you're part of it in a way and what was interesting about when we did freeze is that I wasn't expecting the breathing and the cold exposure to help me in a similar capacity but it absolutely did well, yeah, you, and, saw it, you saw it I mean for someone um you know like yourself you you went on sort of leaps and bounds throughout the show at the start of the show you you, you know you could see how fearful you actually were um and then and then you sort of just watched you progress it was similar with Alfie Bo and you you saw kind of him at the end and you were just like it, it, you know nobody can dispute the fact that this is doing some good yeah, I agree. And if you look at me and Alf, you know, Alf is completely different to me. And the reason why Alf went in there were different to the, why I went in there. But at the same time, you you also had this kind of, you can compare them. And the same with the other people who went in there. We all went in there for a particular reason. And we all hoped to get something out of it. And I think we all did. And I I went in there thinking, is this going to work? I don't know. Is it going to be fun? I don't know. Let's give it a go. And I came out the other side, having had a great time, met some amazing new friends, all of whom I still keep in touch with, and have got these mechanisms to deal with things that are thrown my way now, which is just, just lovely. Yeah. And and now there are rumours that there, uh, there there might be a second series in the pipeline. I, I've seen those rumours um, across social media. Um, so if, if what would you say to a celebrity who was potentially offered to go on it? What what advice would you give to them uh, to potentially take part? I think to just do it because there's no other show like this out there. And I think when it you know when it was announced and when people first started watching it, people were thinking what's this show going to be like? Because it's not like the other kind of reality TV shows where you're put into situations that are scary or you have to eat things or, you know, these sorts of things, or you have to perform. It's it's very different. It's it's a more personal thing. And for me, it was just, a, it was just an amazing experience. And I wasn't expected to come out the other side feeling this way. I thought that, yeah, maybe it would be fun. Maybe I'll meet some people and it would be a TV show, great. But if it can help my anxiety, even better. And it did. 
So, oh my gosh, I would say absolutely do it. And also to anyone who is wondering, you know, I don't want to do a cold shower. I don't want to have a cold shower. Try it. One thing that Wim told me, because I spoke to Wim a lot about cold and I hate getting my head under the water. You know, I hate the water on my head. And he said, you don't have to really get your head under the cold water. You can just make sure the cold water is on your torso. Do it for five seconds. Have your normal shower. Five seconds of cold then 10, then 20, then before you know it, you'll be able to do like a minute. Mm. So give it a go. So it's almost like just progressing with it as well and, and knowing that you're not going to be able to do it straight off because not many people would be able to do it straight off and then almost just Im- improving and enhancing and pushing yourself. Yeah, and when I had to jump into the ice lake on the first day when Holly and Lee were there and they were like, you've got to jump into this now, and I cried and I hated it. And I was just, you know, it, it was the uncontrollable anxiety that just overwhelms you mm. that took took over, really. And then at the end, I was kind of in ice water for seven minutes and swimming under ice sheets and um, wasn't expecting to be able to do that. So it is exposure. It's getting used to stuff and it's using things as tools to help you do that as well, I suppose. Definitely. And um, so for Owen, for, for you, what's next? What's coming up? What have you got in the pipeline? Well, Wales Home of the Year is going up now, which we just is just lovely. I'm working on um, a new series for CBBC at the moment. That will be announced soon. So some new stuff coming up there. Um, and yeah, I guess just watch this space. There's more drumming coming up. That's definitely something that's going to be ramping up over the next couple of months as well. And yeah. Um, just enjoying what I'm doing, you know. I'm just having a great time. I'm going to be on the hit list that's coming up soon, Tipping Point on ITV. And, yeah, so a couple of other shows as well that I've been recording, yeah. I've seen two particular roles that people have suggested that you take part in, and every time I've seen it, I'm like, oh, well, that's that's genius. So it, <laughs> the first one is taken over from Richard Osman on Pointless. I think that would be... <laughs> fantastic and the Love second it. one um is countdown would you ever do countdown <laughs> well listen as far as countdown is concerned <laughs> i don't know if my math skills are up there right. i'll have to speak to borders about that because you know she's the she's the queen of countdown yeah of course. And, uh, but yeah i mean i reckon any opportunity that's presented to you you just need to take it mm-hmm. and give it a go so who knows if I get on Countdown, though, I'd be very surprised, Sam. Well, I, I, want, I, want, I want the first interview, if you do. I, I'm getting that exclusive. <laughs> you know, I, I'd back right. you that. Um, and the okay. other thing I wanted to ask you, it's almost like a th- three-tip sort of thing, because, so, oh, I, I'm, I, I like wearing a floral shirt from time to time. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, all for, I'm all for that. So what would you say are Owain's top three tips in ha- how to dress like Owain? Oh my gosh, I love that. I love that. Well, number one, be bold. Don't be afraid to give something a go. Um, always try to have something that matches, I would say. Like when I wear a brooch, like this brooch has got a little green centre on it there. Then we can see that, Sam. Yeah, I, I can. Um, there's a bit of green in my shirt and also there's a bit of tan in my shirt. So I'm wearing a tan jacket. Mm-hmm. Don't feel like you always have to match. Clash, like tonight I'm filming something and I'm going to wear a pink suit with a bit of purple okay. and I think a bit of blue. So, yeah, I also use the colour wheel. If you look at a colour wheel, the colours opposite one another will always go together. Wow. So I never thought that's that. A good, yeah, so if you've got, like, a blue suit, what's opposite blue with a colour wheel, like a yellow or an orange, that'll absolutely go with it. Really? So the colour wheel is also a good tip. And also, darling, just... Do whatever. Like I've started wearing these. Um, I've bought these amazing blouses recently from vintage shops. I love a vintage shop. So like women's blouses with big kind of puffy, you know, little frills down here. Looks great under a suit. Well, there we are. I mean, ne- any photo I wear next, I'm going to be like, well, inspired by Owen Wood Evans. Um, <laughs> oh, I, um, from all of us, thank you very much for having a chat with us. Uh, and have a nice day. Dear Sam, lovely to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you, Owen. I stopped-